So, good morning, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, I've been receiving a lot of uh, requests and uh, questions from so many students and uh, friends and uh, uh, colleagues about uh, computers and information processing. For before I go into that, I'm just going to introduce myself. In between the words, my name. Uh, I'm an IT professional and a teacher as well. So many questions are coming in from every side. Please tell us more about computers and information processing. So that is why I've uh, decided to come up with. Uh, with this uh, with this tutorial so this is uh, computer and uh, information processing so on this uh, on this this on this we shall be discussing on computers and information processing so before I dive into that I'm just going to take us through uh, some of the things that we'll be learning I mean the the, the objectives our objectives for this particular uh, tutorial so after completing this chapter uh, we will be able to distinguish between data and information which is this and then uh, two we'll be able to recognize the role of information in decision making and then again we will be able to learn about the importance of database and data management and again we'll be able to explain the fundamental concept in the database management system and lastly we will be able to demonstrate how to create a basic database all these are embedded in this tutorial that we will be going through at this particular moment so without wasting any of our time let's dive in into the basics and uh, uh, the main reason why we have this topic and why we want to treat this topic so I am just going to go into the first introduction which says there are seemingly endless amount of information in our society. Each day, as scholars and professionals ponder new ideas and ask questions or as events unfold, more new information is created. This information are described as processed or meaningful data, data contents or any collections of word numbers and symbols organized so that it is meaningful to the person using it so to summarize what i have just read to us i'm just to give i'm just going to give it a simple uh, definition to uh, information is just uh, information is a meaningful data i mean a data that has been transformed into uh, a meaningful context that we can understand that you and I can understand so information they are collection of words a collection of words numbers and symbols that has been organized into a meaningful uh, into a meaningful data that you and I can understand that means it has been arranged it has been edited it has been proved to the world to be meaningful and digestible to the society and take for example if you have performed or if you have performed a pressure like this in one way or the other maybe on your system or on your phone then that means you personally are taking part in what we call information processing now look at this many of us have the gmail account our phone our google account and many of us go to the internet and type in so many material for so many things or to check many of things or to find out or to get information about a certain product or another so if you have done this if you have done this that means you are seemingly taking part in what we call information processing now let's look at this commonly used web applications what are the uh, web applications that 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 we can use in information processing now you def you definitely must have used the internet to do one 
of the following tasks. Number one, check your web email. Many of us ask email just like I've explained earlier. Gmail is not the only mail platform that we have. We have the Yahoo Mail or the Hotmail and so on and so forth. So as long as we have done this, check your email address. That means you've taken part in what we call information processing. And many of us, number two, search the library for a book. For example, you're looking for a kind of material and uh, you go to the library to kind of like search for a material that will help you in, in, in your research or whatever it is you are looking for you are uh, in one way or the other taking part in what we call information processing use the MOE exam website for information or your results for example all this academic academic platform online you've gone there search for information check answers check results and so on and so forth you have in one way or the other taking part in what we call the information processing another one is search for product on the website for example you want to search for a product maybe or you want to buy get uh, purchase a new phone and then before you go to the market to buy this new phone you want to check the product on the internet maybe it's meet your what your specifications or what you want to use the phone to do so you go to the internet and make use of your search engine to search for a particular product on the website if you have done this that means you are in one way or the other taking part in what we call information processing and the la and lastly update your profile details on facebook or any other social media this is very very common among us i'm telling you statistically uh, let me say 70 75 or 80 percent of the world population knows what is called facebook and each and every one of us have uh, an account on this facebook platform so for example you have a facebook platform your name is registered you have an account on your own you have so many tabs bookmarks on your facebook and there is need for you to update some of the information that you have on your facebook and you log in and then you try to change maybe you try to change your surname or maybe you try, try to change your occupation or maybe you try to send the message across to some other people on the facebook platform if you have done this that means you have you have in one way or the other taking part in what we call information processing now how do you think it is possible to meet the data requirement for each of the listed tasks how do you think it is possible for you to meet the data requirements for you? now all these efficient means of data access and data management have been made possible by what a database database are designed to offer an organized mechanism for storing managing and retrieving information now in another way around if i am to explain what we call database database is just like a platform through which you what you organize data you organize your data you arrange data store data for you to be able to retrieve them whenever you need them in the nearest future so database is very very important in the sense that it helps you to do what to organize to arrange and store data either for present or for future use for example you have a cardboard in your house and uh, you store the cardboard with foodstuffs uh, beverages uh, and so many things that you will be needing it's not necessary for you to be needing them now but it is also necessary for you to be needing them what in the nearest future so the process through which you have in a in which through which you go through in a library whereby a uh, mathematics textbook are being separated and kept in one side english uh, english textbook are being separated arranged neatly and kept in one side social study textbook have been arranged neatly and materials and have been stored in one side so that whosoever is going to need the materials knows where to go to to get each and every of the information and then make use of them either presently or in the future so that is one of the characteristics and the importance of what we call database so as you can see database is very 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 important in 
uh, information processing. So going way forward, we said we have some database store confidential confidential and important information and hence requires password and other security features in order to access the information now this is very easy and it is very very understandable by some of us who keep document or some of us who keep uh, sensitive data for example Many of us using smartphones nowadays, we put password and security keys on our phone simply because maybe we have some sensitive information or data on our phone that we don't want a third party person to want to have access to. For example, contacts on the phone is an example, a typical example of what we can call uh, an information that are kept what in the phone database management system, through which it is being passworded so that no one else has, uh, the third party does not have access to to your contact. So you what you you incur uh, a security code on your phone simply because the information you have on the phone is very very confidential. Now, database can operate on a standalone machine or can be accessible in a network environment such as Fiji government intranet and internet. Now, let me explain this. There are some database management systems that are hosted on the internet. For example, Mega Cloud is an example, and we have uh, again we have uh, Google Store, Google Cloud. All these things are platform or as a, 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 a internet or internet mechanism or platform through which we can store our data or we can keep a database. For example, I have been opportune to use a mega cloud, uh, a mega cloud database management system before, whereby you pack you purchase uh, some certain amount of of of, of memory on the on, on, on the cloud whereby you can upload some of your confidential information into the cloud database management system and it is being hosted on the internet where nobody has access to or else uh, no one at the third person does not have access to except you so that is an example of what of our network environment database management system and we have some standalone machine like the local database management system we have on our phones or on our computer and some of the gadgets that we keep in our houses or with us so these are the two kind of uh, database management system one is also on the internet and one is what is a standalone machine that does not need that, that that does not require you to host it on the on the on the internet so going further we are going to dive in into what we call data and what data and information now let's talk about data what do we mean by data data is a raw measurement and observation in the form of text number symbol images and sound which on their own have no meaning I quote, have no meaning. I repeat again, have no meaning. For example, I will just say data is an unprocessed information. That is, information that has not been what that has not been processed. I, I love this topic. Why? Because it says a data is a data is a raw measurement. Data is like a raw material that has not been processed. Okay, let me give you this example. For example, raw materials like uh, uh, a cassava. We know there are some of the, there are so many things that are, can be derived from cassava. For example, before your cassava turns to gari, it goes through a lot of process. Before it turns to garlic, for example, you go to the farm and get your cassava. From getting your cassava, you peel. From peeling your cassava, you wash. From washing your cassava, you soak them. From soaking your cassava, you grind. From grinding, you, you blend, you cut, you do so many things. You dry and fry before you get your garlic. 
So now linking this to what we call data, our data is just like a pure cassava that has not been processed. Does not have many. It's not possible for a normal woman being to pick cassava on the or a, a fresh harvested cassava and start eating. It's barbaric. So that is why data can be it can be in one way or the other classified as a cassava that has not been processed. So it contains it contains text, numbers, symbols, images, and sound, which on their own have no meaning. For example, somebody just came into the somebody just came into come or maybe somebody just entered your office and shouted La! just a random noise like that. Noise that has no meaning. Sound that has no meaning. It's what? It's a data. I guess it now. So data is just like information that has that has not been arranged that has not been sequentially arranged so it is called it is called data now data they may be made up of numbers called numeric they is called alpha data or a combination of both numeric and alpha and alpha alpha data called alpha numeric so in this place i'm trying to tell us that data is grouped or classified into three parts which we have the numeric part we have the uh, alphabetic part and we have the word alphanumeric, uh, alphanumeric part which the numeric part contains just only numbers just only numbers for example one two three four five six five hundred one thousand one million those are numeric data they contain just numbers and on the other hand we have text called alphabet we all know our alphabet we have 26 alphabets and which are what from a to z we have b we have c we have d bola gd henry andrew those are alphabetical data and lastly we want to talk about uh alphanumeric Alpha numerics is the combination of two words alpha which is alphabet and numeric which is numbers so alpha numeric can be can be can be can be said to be combination of words of alphabet and numbers for example some of the password we use on our phone or some of the security codes we use on our laptop or our social media account can contain alphanumeric data with which for example is ade213 or henry146 or uh, andrew000 those are alphanumeric data example of data include height of a student Suppose 1.5 meter is what is data. Height of a student. Suppose 1.5 meter is what is classified as what as a data. His name. Suppose Josiah is a what is a data because it has not been confirmed. Suppose his name. Suppose Josiah. Just suppose is different from his name is Josiah. So it has not yet been confirmed. It has not yet. Be, it's just like somebody say, ah, what, "What is that guy's name?" Or uh, maybe I think maybe his name is Joshua. It has not been confirmed. That means that person is not even sure. It has not been confirmed. So it is a data until the name has been confirmed. That is when it turns to information. That is when it turns to a meaningful information. Another one is is weight suppose 67 kg that means he is not sure it's not certain that is why he use word suppose now his height his hair color suppose brown is a word is a data and so on number of hours worked suppose 40 hours numbers of units of electricity consumed suppose 75 all these things are data because they have not been confirmed yet so it is just like uh, a simple guess hypothesis so you understand hypothesis they are what 
when something has not been confirmed like for example oh some uh, two people are fighting you are not there so you are guessing maybe ah they've injured themselves maybe they've injured themselves you don't know if they have or they have not until you get there and confirm that they've injured themselves before it becomes uh, an information but this initial statement is a data because it has not been confirmed now information on the other hand is a is a is data organized and presented with context and meaning which can be what evaluated that is statements can be made about it either true or false and coherent or incoherent example of information include the average height or weight of form 5 students suppose 1.58 is information that means the average weight of the class suppose 61 kg is information the reason why this is information is because series of tests have been conducted series of tests have been conducted to get the average weight of a particular class that means they've conducted something like um they've collected information samples of the weight of people in the class individually and has been accumulated together and to get the average weight of a particular class suppose what is 61 kg is an information because a series of tests have been conducted before they came out with what with 61 kg that's what makes it an information is different from picking a single student out and you guessing maybe this person is what this person is 1 kg 2 kg 3 kg or 4 kg so those are the literal difference between a data and information the data is a raw fact that has no meaning it contains numeric alphabetic and alphanumeric but they are not yet organized they are what they are meaningless that's why they are data while on the other hand information is a processed data a data that has been processed a data that has been proven to be true a data that has been properly arranged in its own proper context uh, uh, a data that has been that has been worked on is referred to as what is referred to as information now another example of data versus information suppose shamita got 58 in mass 76 in english 69 in physics and 82 in computing science in his short test one now total mark is 58 plus 78 plus 69 plus 82 which is equal to what 285 that is an information because now let me let me show you the interesting aspect of this now a student called Shemita got 58 in math 76 in English 69 and 82 in computer science this is what we call a raw fa a, 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 a raw this is what we call a raw data a raw fact because a certain student got some scores in some certain subject those are unarranged those are uncoordinated those are uh, unrealistic uh, kind of data those are raw facts that has not been arranged that has not been sequenced together and that has not been proven to be this I guess now, those are raw facts but the moment those scores have been put together arranged either subtracted or added together or multiplied together to give you a certain cumulative score that is when it becomes an information so now i think you can understand the difference between what we call a data and an information now here the individual marks are data but the total mass that are calculated is what is information processing help transform data into information so this is where this is the uh, particular uh, point that i want to bring out from this
Now, this course that was the, 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 the course of Shemita, either in mathematics, English, physics, computer science, those are raw fact core data that has been given. Now, the moment this data has been brought together as marks, calculated together, and a, an answer, a cumulative score is being generated, that is when it becomes a meaningful information. Now, here, the individual marks are data, but the total marks that are calculated is what is information. Processing help transform data into information. That is just what it costs. Processing, turning. Okay, let me give you this typical example. You want to take tea early in the morning. You have sugar, you have bon vita, you have milo, you have cup, and you have spoon. These things, all these things that I've mentioned, they are what? They are data. They are unsequentially arranged data. They have not been arranged, they are meaningless. For example, a normal man cannot eat a spoon. You can't eat a cup. You can't just open your sugar and pour it in your mouth and say you are eating. And it is not possible for you to turn a bag of or a container or a spoon or a container or a, or a cup of bomb vita into your mouth and tell me. But until all these materials are brought together, mixed with different with with kind of different mixtures. And now Bringing sugar into the water, bringing tea into the water, bringing your milk, your, your your milk into the water, stirring together, it what it, it 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 transforms into what we call tea, and that is when it becomes a meaningful information. Tea is drinkable. I hope you get that. Now this can also be explained as what as input and output. Now. In the middle of input and output, there is something at the middle called the processing. Now, the processing is how the input, which is the raw material or raw data, is being transported or turned into an output, which is called a reasonable information. Now, going further, let's look at our data organization. Now, to be processed by the computer, data is typically classified into groups or categories as shown in this figure. Each group is more complex than one before. Now, we have a character, we have a field, we have a record, we have a file, and then we have a database. Without all these initial stages, there is nothing called a database. Because character leads to what we call field, the field leads to what we call the record, and record leads to file, while file leads to a database. So these are arranged hierarchically in a way that is best explained or in a way that makes it more very easier for us to be able to, be able to explain database. Now, character is a single letter number or special character such as punctuation marks the dollar sign these are the smallest unit of data representation now character for example you have a film a whole video now somebody just a person is a what is a character a single person is a character in the whole film you can imagine for example you have a film that contains more than 100 people now talking about a character singling one person out of the whole cast in the film is a word is a character which is the word the smallest unit of data representation for example a letter is a character either a letter or a number a punctuation special character or and what have you they are what they are character because they are what they are they are the smallest unit of data representation so if i ask you what is a character you know character 
is the word is the smallest unit of word of data representation and um, for example a letter a number a special character for example a dot comma or a dollar sign is an example of a character now going from character into field a field also called column contains a set of logical related character for example on a form a person's first name is a field now let me explain a field for you a field contains a set of logical related character for example my name is Ibitola now the spelling of Ibitola I B I T O L A now a character is just a single letter in my name for example I B is a word is character but what makes it a field is the combination of two or more character that gives a reasonable word or meaning i don't i i i i, I think you are getting me for example a meaningful word like go contains two character go is a field because it contains more than one character i get it now for example school s-c-h-o-o-l-e is a field because it contains two or more character it can be a name it can be the name of a thing it can be the name of a place it can be the name of a person it can be the, the, be, uh, the name of an animal so far it contains more than one character it is a word it is a field now again a field contains a set of logical related character for example on a form a person's first name is a field the last name is another field this the street name is another field I get it now. You are filling them in a form. They say fill the following field. Fill the following field in this form. Now the first upper part, the name of a person is a field. Fill it. The street name is a field. The last name is there. Surname is there. Age is there. Those are those are logical related characters which make up of or what a field now from field we are transcending into what we call the record the word the record which is also what the rule is a collection of logical related field represented together all the content of a form concerning one particular itinerary can be called a record. For example, somebody say, ah, this guy, what's his name? His name is Victor Lua Timlai. Okay, go and bring his record. That means inside a record, my name is there, my age is there, my picture is there, my surname is there, my age is there, and so many things. So many information about me is inside my record. So record, we can say, is bigger than a field while a field is bigger than a character don't forget a character is a single word in a given field while a field it contains a set of logical related characters just like you have explained while a record is collection of logical related fields we have so many we have multiple fields in the world in a record because your name is a field your age is a field, your class is a field, your age is a field. So all these fields are was are contained in one record. Now from there we are transcending into what? Into file. File or table is a collection of logical related record. All forms which are recorded are kept in a file. For example, you have pictures. Okay, for example, let me use a com board as an example. You have a com board. A com board is a file because a com board contains you you keep 
every of your things inside the cupboard be it your shoes be it your your clothes your shoes your bags your beverages your food stuff they are what they can be an example of what file record field or character so all these things put together are kept in a file that means the file is the largest is the largest in what we call in what we call the word the information now database integrates data database integrates data it is defined as the collection of integrated data by integrated we mean the data consists of logically related fields or, or sorry pardon logically related files linked tables in the database we have so many files in a database which makes database the head or the largest unit of what of information so you can see it's hierarchically arranged from character to field from field to record from record to file and from file to database your characters joined together are, are found are, are kept in what in the field while fields fields joined together are embedded in what in what we call the record and the record record so many records are embedded in what we call the file while combinations and collections of files are what are kept in a database so that is that about that now let's look at the characteristics of data and information data are the raw materials input of information while information is the resultant output version of some data number two data is a distinct piece of information information always be processed or organized data is disorganized or unprocessed while information provide context which gives meaningful data now difference between data and information so we look at that that's what we just uh we just talked about so now this is a question the difference between the data and information so let's look at what we have if you are applying for an interview give some example of data and information you will furnish to your potential employer differentiate between what data and information you will provide suppose you are using facebook give some example of data and information displayed on the social media networking i think that's a short exercise for us to do and in our next topic in our next tutorial we are going to be answering we're going to be giving answer to this uh short question that is being given to us because of our time and uh, the time scheduled for this uh, tutorial we might not be able to answer these questions presently and if you think you have any questions to ask or there's something you don't understand in uh, in the tutorial that has just been given to us please don't hesitate to 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 uh, to use the comment box below you'll be seen below to ask your questions and i promise you immediately as a question is being read it's uh, appropriate attention will be given to it and answers will be sent so feel free to go over it again ask read digest ask questions and then this video is going to be posted on my, on my youtube platform please go there read download and don't forget to what to subscribe my name is Ibedo Oluwa I still remain your number one IT teacher and professional in the whole universe. So, you have any questions, you have any difficulty in any subject, topics, in your school, area, anywhere, please don't hesitate to let me know so I can get some materials and then try and explain some of these topics, break them down. As far as it's good so that we can understand them and we can make use of them to improve ourselves thank you see you next time bye bye